This time I call the October meeting of the County Commission to order. I'd like to ask the County Attorney, Mr. Jackson, if he would give the invocation, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance and Flag by Commissioner Wade. <coughs> Most gracious Heavenly Father, we again thank you for the opportunity to come together to do the work of the people of Lincoln County. We ask that you give each and every one of us your wisdom and your guidance to do what is right in your eyes. We ask for all of the folks in Lincoln County to comprehend and understand what is done here, that hopefully it is for their benefit. We thank you, Lord, for an opportunity to be here, and we ask that you just bless each and every person who is here today. Bless this county, state, and especially bless this nation, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item four on the agenda is the approval of the minutes of the previous meetings held in September. Is there a motion that we approve the minutes as sent to you? I'll make a motion, Mr. Chairman, that we're approved. Second. I second, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Commissioner Wade, second by Commissioner Henderson. Any discussion on the motion? Chair, he is none. All in favor of the motion, let it be known saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. In the minutes are approved. This time I would like to make a little switch around if I could on the agenda. I would like to take item number 14 and place it right up under the Department of Report. So it'll go to number seven and then they'll slide back down in the order that they were in. Without objection, so ordered. That's what we will do with the agenda. Is our motion that we approve the agenda? Don't so you need to delete item eight? Yes. So we made that correction? Yes, item number eight will be deleted. I would have done it when we got to it, but that's fine. Item number eight is being deleted. Mr. Gray asked to be removed from the agenda at this meeting. Um, so that, that would be all. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion? There is none. All in favor of the motion, let me know saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign, motion is carried. With the uh, departmental reports, agenda item number six, eight, Office of Emergency Services, Director Brown. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. It's good to see you this evening. As always, it's an honor and a privilege to be here. You have my written report. I don't have anything to add at the moment uh, unless there are any questions. Mr. Wade. A couple of small questions here. Yes, sir. I noticed that uh, your billing is 54000 Yes, sir. And your revenues collected is twenty four. Yes, sir. That's close to 50%, which is pretty good. Yes, sir, I believe so. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, uh, we, we've been managing to stay around 50%. The whole COVID ordeal mess with it a little bit we had some actually dipped early when during the shutdown we had fewer calls but yes sir i think that's a that's a pretty good about the best we can answer calls are up, uh, slightly. they are yes sir um no sir not that i could put a finger on uh other than uh you know uh changes in temperature affecting people with seasonal allergies and respiratory disorders and things like that our number one cause is difficulty breathing last question um I know she got four part-time positions open and then two full-time. And I'm just wondering, is there, is there a lot of difference in the certification on the part-time employees? 
Do they mm -hmm. have to have the same training or not as much training? Or? Um, no, the training is the same based on the level, whether they're an EMT, an EMT intermediate, an advanced EMT, or a paramedic. Um, you know, we try and keep a uh, spectrum of all levels employed at the part-time uh, uh, position so that we can use them to fill in in gaps in the scheduling uh, to try and avoid uh, unscheduled overtime. Thank you, Greg. Yes, sir. Any other questions, Director? You, Mr. Chairman, if I might. Mr. Collins. Director, I noticed uh, October the 6th you had a fire services advisory committee meeting. Yes, sir. Are these going all right? We're kicking them back off. Uh, by January, we'll be on our normal yearly schedule. Uh, we, we had not met due to COVID, and we were ready to get going again, and, and uh, we, so we did meet Tuesday. A little out of sequence, but uh, we established a quorum and, and had a great discussion. And those minutes will be avail available to you by the next meeting. I wanted them tonight, but we couldn't quite get them all typed up for tonight for you. All right. Thank you, sir. Any other questions, Director Room? If not, thank you. Yes, sir. Six minutes, recreation department done. Director Blake is not here. Soccer is going on. I know it's illegal. <coughs> in this room wants to get out of that pretty quick. But he asked to be. Excuse you have his report. Um, this is the record. You notice the splash pad has closed. I think September the 30th, the end of that. They'll be draining all the water out here, preparing it for the winter areas. Sure. Mr. Clyde. I'd just like to comment uh, and, uh, on Director Blaze, Director Seymour, and your leadership too, as far as that goes, but it's a whole Say that last part again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm complimenting you on your leadership. Uh, if you haven't been to the Director Department in a while, which I haven't, I mean, it's a totally new look. And I wonder how the ag vendor is going to fit in with all the uh, other facilities out there. But with all the work going on out there, that thing is looking soft. And uh, I mean, from coming from the old days of what we got today, I think the taxpayer could be proud for that facility and the people who children enjoy it. I know they can. But uh, thank you all for a good job. Appreciate it. Thank you. And if. The sales tax, you know, sales tax is on the ballot. The sales tax is successful, which I certainly hope people it would be, but we got uh, we got a certain amount of money in the new sales tax to go for further expansions and other things at the recreation complex. And I just believe Mr. if you go around any of the counties around the outside, not Columbia or Richmond. I throw I back up and all in, man. I just, I just think we uh, yeah. we got a superb facility out there, man. It's continuing to grow and will continue, I hope. Uh, it makes you feel good you drive with those 250, 300 people out there utilizing the facility. All right, that's it. Do you have anything to discuss with Rick Blaze? He'll be out there. You give him a call. 6C is the finance department director. Dollars. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, I have uh, submitted my report, but I, I did want to, uh, over the next couple of months, I'm going to probably change uh, my reporting some and, and actually um, uh, do a little bit more verbal report. But I did want to report that, uh, that as you know, our, our our, our revenue budget, uh, we collect uh, a fair amount of our revenues uh, when the property taxes come in. So if you adjust uh, for the fact that we have, uh, property taxes won't come in until uh, later this year, um, we're actually on track. Uh, our, our overall revenues, less property taxes, um, which are not due, um, are actually on track where we're supposed to be. So we're, we're tracking well there. We're also tracking well on our expenses. Um, uh, we're right at about 26 percent. Uh, we're a quarter way through, so we're just just a little bit over on some of our expenses. So we're doing well there. We are getting prepared for our annual audit. I've been working with uh, our auditors and uh, gathering some data 
Ada, and they will be here um, the week of the 26th uh, to uh, begin our uh, FY20 audit. And so uh, we're working uh, we're working on all those avenues. Any questions for you? Mr. Chairman, if I might. Mr. Um, I would just like to say that the director, these four pages, I like. Okay. Uh, on the first page, we see the balance that we have at the end of the month, going back to the end of July. And as you and I have talked, I like this because if somebody come, if we decide we want to spend some money, it's good to know you got it before you want to spend it, and it's good to know where it's coming from. And I, I appreciate this the way this is laid out for us. Thank you. Any other questions? Director, doctor, just for your information, and I don't know why, I could hear him just because he's this close to me. He didn't come through my monitor at all. Uh, Clerk McKellar, if you talk a little more closer to you, because I have a hard time. I, I, I think, Mr. Chairman, I was actually looking this way and not speaking this way. <laughs> so I know where I look at where I can hear you. I knew what you were saying, though, because you were just close to me. Um, public Works, Director Robert Seymour. <laughs> Chairman, members of the board, you have um, my written reports. I uh, don't have really much to add to those. Um, unless you have some questions, I'll be more than happy to um, answer any questions you have this time. Yeah. Mr. Wade. Yeah. I just want to uh, compliment you. All the paving and the resurfacing. Uh, it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Um, so you've done a wonderful job. And uh, I know the people of Lincoln County appreciate well, thank the resurfacing you, sir. and new pavement out on the road and on the highway. The county is looking good. And uh, I guess it is leadership from the chairman over here. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, thank you for a good job. You're more than welcome. Mr. Mr. Clyde. Uh, since Commissioner Wade is bragging the roads, I appreciate the roads too. But can you give us any progress reports on the striping on some of the roads we paved? Um, I can. Um, so we talked with DOT. We, we actually got a grant. Um, Back in, um, in, well, last year, we were told we had gotten a grant through some federal funding that kind of trickles down through uh, Georgia DOT. It's called the Off-System Safety Enhancement Program. And what that program does is it does striping and signage for, for county roads that are off-system, which is off of Georgia DOT system. And so we were awarded a $333,333 grant uh, through that program. However, we learned today that that's probably not going to happen until probably summer of 21. Um, so um, it looks like we're going to have to do some work on the roads that we have paved at this point um, for safety purposes, uh, particularly White Rock and um, Amity Woodlawn. Um, so I'm going to be working with the chairman and trying to get that done, those two roads. Um, White Rock was not on the list to begin with, so that road will have to be done in its entirety. Um, Amity Woodlawn is on that list. Um, however, I think we're going to need to do uh, maybe a center line uh, temporarily um, until we can get to the summer and have the whole road uh, striped for safety purposes because it is pretty dark, uh, particularly at night or if it's raining. Um, so we'll be we'll be trying to handle those two roads here in the next couple of weeks. That's good yes, sir. Appreciate that. Any other questions, Director Simo? Let me uh, give Mr. Clive a little talk while I go about the progress of 
I won't call it progress, but I think that's what it is. 220 and 47 Clyde's Cross. As you commissioners know, we applied for and we've been working with DOT to get a little more warnings down there with what's going on. We have a good many wrecks too, I think, last week, the week before last. And you're familiar with the stop signs that we want to do the flashing red on the 220 side, both sides. We had a little trouble with getting our permit and done. It should be a DOT project, but they won't do it, so we're having to take the lead on it. But they notified us, Robin and I, today that they have uh, got the permit taken care of. We should have it in hand the first part of the week. They are about roughly $1,800 a piece, and it looks like we're going to have to put four up. There's two stop signs on each side down. So what this means is when you're approaching 47 on either side of 220, you'll have strobe lights flashing around the stop sign to get your attention. It's work day and night, and it's solar panels. We will be purchasing through T Splice money pay for those four signs and Columbia County uh, has agreed to send their people up here and install them and get the solar panels not working at no charge to them. So be on the lookout for that. In the next few weeks that should take place. That's a good neighbor too, isn't it? Columbia County, Mr. Steve. They've done it. They've done it. They work well with us, I can tell you that. They like their little children. <laughs> but Columbia County does work mighty well with Lincoln County. Good appreciate Any other questions, Director Seymour? Well, he got off bike. <laughs> okay, this time this pardon with the library will come and we we are very, very familiar with what it is, but if you'll just hit it briefly. Okay. We want to take a um about a uh, thank you. About a month ago, we applied. About a month ago, we applied for a grant through the Georgia Historical Record Archi uh, Advisory Council to uh, for twenty five hundred dollars to continue to uh, preserve our historical records in the library. At the moment, we have about over, a little over a thousand documents from about seventeen seventy to late eighteen hundreds, um, and this money we got approved for would just be to continue to um, keep them preserved, have them on display, and make them readily available to the public more than they are now. Okay, this was discussed at the work session last week that we need a vote that we will accept this grant that she's worked hard to get, and I think this is your first one. So mm -hmm. commend you for what you've done. Look forward to you doing a lot of things up there in the, in the future. Is there a motion that we accept this DHRAC grant in the amount of $2,500? That's open, Mr. Chair. That's second. I'll second, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Collins, thank you. Commissioner Pye, thank you. <laughs> Commissioner Collins, second it. Any discussion on the motion? There is none. All in favor of the motion, let me know. Say aye. Aye. All opposed, like, sign. The motion is carried. Thank you. Thank you. Go to the recreation. <laughs> she's, got, she's got a son out there that's going to star soccer player, but she wants to watch him play. So we move her. All right, it is time to go into a public hearing. Is there a motion that we go into a public hearing? So moved. Second? I second. Motion by Commissioner Henderson, second by Commissioner Collins. Do we go into a public hearing and discussion on the motion? Chair is none. All in favor of the motion, let me know. Say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Motion carried. We in our public hearing. Director Seymour. Yes, sir. On August 28th, I'm, uh, my apologies. On October the 5th, the Planning Commercial, uh, Commission heard the following request. The applicant is Steve Watkins with Verizon Wireless, who is, who is here with us tonight. It's map 31, parcel 037. On Ferguson Justice Road, uh, it's actually Ferguson Justice and Thompson Highway uh, parcel, uh, consisting of 50.7 acres, currently zoned A1 um, agriculture. 
Uh, the request is for a special use to apply to construct a 230-foot self-supporting uh, Verizon tower. Um, it will be located, um, I think you have maps in your, in your book that show the location, but basically it's off of the Ferguson Justice side um, of that parcel. Um, that parcel is fronted really on three sides by Thompson Highway 220 and Ferguson Justice. And so um, the site would be closer to the Ferguson Justice side of the property. I think it's about 100 by 100 uh, square that's actually getting the special use. Uh, my board heard the request and uh, recommends approval of the site. Um, there was no, um, no one present at the meeting to speak against the, the, um, the project. And uh, just for the record, um, I brought a copy of the book, um, which is what they have to provide us with all the documentation to meet our code. Um, and I want to let you know that they did meet all the requirements of the code, and this is how much they have to do to meet that code. Um, and it will be kept on record and on file. Um, also understand that they have a year um, to pull this permit. Uh, to start construction on the tower. Um, once the tower is erected, uh, I think it is, um, I think it's 90 days to have it up and operational. Uh, within, within 90 days, if not, then, then the county will have a bond in place to require them to um, decommission the tower and take it down. Uh, so we don't have uh, sites that we currently have, which we call bare naked you know, bare, bare naked sites where they just have a tower sitting there with no equipment on it. So we do have those things in place in our ordinance to require them to go ahead and build it. If they don't pull the permit within a year, um, then the special use goes away and will have to come back before you at a, at a later date. And that's what happened to this one originally, was it was originally approved, it went past the year, and so they've re they're reapplying currently today. And I think it's my understanding, I, the question was asking our planning commission about the one that was uh, um, approved about two months ago um, down on Thompson Highway and, and why they haven't started with it. And my understanding is the first quarter of 21. Probably the first or second quarter. Hold on just a minute. Mr. Mr. Uh, Watkins, if you would make your way up here, because this is recorded and you own our local cable TV too. We need to get you on this. My understanding is this is going to be erected in the first or second quarter of, of 21. So um, I'll let him speak on, on that. If you behalf. would, state your name and I, who you with. Actually, my name is Clark Davidson. Mr. Watkins cannot be here. Your name uh, is what? Clark Davidson. And I'm, with, yes, sir. and I'm with the firm Comsite that is representing Verizon on this matter. And in regard to their build plan and construction schedule, these sites are on their 2021 build plan. So they would most likely be constructed in the first or second quarter of 2021. I might be speaking just a little bit out of, out of turn, but I, I think it's my understanding is that maybe we'll be back here doing the same thing in a couple of months. Is that, is that with Verizon too? Uh, yes, sir. There, there is a potential third site. And you think the timeline will be that all three of those, they'll be working on probably the same, at least these two folks be doing it. I, I, I would think with, uh, within a short time period of, of one another. But, but we will have these towers in operation. That is my understanding, is we, they will we, be. We just don't, we got such terrible service here. A lot of, I don't know what happened, we hadn't had any more towers, but the service is not near as good as it was five years ago, uh, and I don't know why. We need I, these towers. I, under, I understand. We don't want to tie up no equipment on it. We want. I want to see that phone it, shoot up. I mean, and I hope that uh, that y'all be coming with some more. But Mr. Henderson represents most of the north end of Lincoln County. And he lives nine miles out of Lincoln, and he says he has pretty good service where he lives. There's no towers at all mm -hmm. up through that. If, if, if any way, I know you got to turn a profit, but if there's any way, I would like to see, if Mr. Henderson would like to see some, at least a tower or two in the north end of Lincoln County. You know, it's 20 miles from here to the Elbow County line, so we, we have very little coverage, and this is, a, this is something different, but I'm going to mention it anyway. 
y'all have approved, hadn't voted yet, but we are, I think, on, on these new cardiac, how do you pronounce that thing? Cardiac, cardiac monitors, and they were here yesterday. We had to have a public with yesterday, we had to have a public here, and, and they will be out here sometime pretty soon, though we ask office, but I want y'all to come look at it. It's the latest thing out, and it will be the first one, I think, in Georgia, is what I believe he, he said. So it's, it's a state-of-the-art piece of equipment, but anyway, I'm on, hold, I'm on different horses. That's, that's, that's pretty clear. Are you saying we need to defibrillate us of uh, Verizon service is good <laughs> and they have a <laughs> Well, they, they got to hit those towers too, but it, it would enhance the ambulance service a lot. Well. Uh, it's just amazing what that thing can do. All right, let me, let me ask this. Is there anyone here that wants to speak for the approval of the special use for Verizon? It is not. Is there anyone here that would like to speak against the commissioner's approval of this rezone? There is not. Do either one of y'all have anything else to say? No, sir. sir. Is there a motion that we take the recommendation of the planning commission and uh, give a special use to map 31 parcel 037 for Verizon cell tower? That's so good, Mr. Chairman. That's second. I'll second, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Commissioner Clyde, second by Commissioner Wade. Any discussion on the motion? Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Collins. I have two questions. What exactly is a 230-foot self-support tower? It's a three-sided lattice tower. So the, there is one, I think as you're coming into Lincolnton, it just looks like a steel pole. That's referred to as a monopole in our industry. And the lattice tower would be a self-supporting three-sided tower. Um, looks kind of like an erector type, erector set type tower. No, that would be a guide tower. So no, no guide. What the self-support means is essentially no guide wires. And one other question, sir. Will this have a light on the top of it? Yes. Anything over uh, 200 feet and above is required by the FAA to be lit. All right. Thank you. Any other questions? All in favor, motion to make the saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign, motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, 7B is an applicant. It is Ryan Sanders, Belt Line Energy, for well, special use, Rex Seymour. Yes, sir. On October the 5th, um, the Planning Commission also heard the request from Beltline Energy LLC for map 29 parcel 003, which is located on Loveless Road. It's a 55 acre tract uh, of land that's currently zoned A1. Uh, the rezoning request is to apply for a special request to develop a ground mounted solar farm. Uh, and I believe that solar farm is about 37 acres um, in size. Uh, I think you also have um, maps of this parcel. Um, and as we discussed uh, before, um, there is a um, Georgia power transmission line that, that basically splits that property. And so um, the solar farm would be on the backside uh, of that um, power line, um, as so it would be shielded from the roadway um, considerably. Uh, it's my understanding that this um, solar farm is going to be a day operational solar farm, so it won't run at all after 5 o'clock, I believe, 5-ish, somewhere in that neighborhood, daylight hours. Um, and so my board recommends approval of the special use for the solar farm as well. Okay, Mr. Mr. Sam. Are you Mr. Sam? I am. <laughs> I need you to vote. All right. Would be helpful when you pass out a few maps so y'all can see what we're Before looking at. Before you say that, I need to make a statement. I agree. Let's see if you are Brian Sam. I had a visit with me in the 
this afternoon. And he happened to be Lauren McDonald, chairman of the Georgia Public Service. <laughs> Rick Seymour was out about this. And I asked him about this and asked him if he was familiar with the belt behind in it and Mr. Sanders. And he spoke very highly of you and your company. Yes, sir. I told him that he he's speaking of get together in Columbia County tonight, but I told him that I was going to relay that information because he was he did he, he spoke real highly of y'all. Well, it's it's nice to hear that we have a uh, well. He was one of the first driving forces in the state of Georgia to support solar. Um, on his watch, the state has done close to three or four billion dollars worth of investment in Georgia. The price has gone from about 10 cents per kilowatt hour down to about two cents per kilowatt hour. He recognized the value early and the price dropped. Georgia, Georgia Power got some experience in the technology. When that price is at the point it is now, it's a, it's a huge asset to the state. And he had the foresight to see that. So um, we've been supporters of uh, Commissioner McDonald from the very beginning. And he's really uh, left a, a, quite a legacy on the state. Well, I didn't want you to know he did. Oh. He did. Pretty good, Chairman Public Service. We regulated y'all pretty highly. And so that was, good. that was good for us to know, too. Oh, it's nice to hear that. You are recognized pretty good by the public service. Okay, you got anything you want to talk about? Well, so last time I was here before y'all, um, it was about nine months ago. Um, we were just catching into this COVID thing. It was the last meeting we had that was normal. Um, and then this COVID's taken in, and all these meetings since then have been either virtual or sparsely populated. And at that time, there was a significant amount of people that were upset with the location that we had chosen. So we withdrew our application went back to the drawing board, found a different site. This site is 100% opaque and not visible from the, site, from the street. We are uh, some three or 400 yards into the woods behind a transmission line. There's already an existing Georgia Power substation such that we think it's a much better location. Um, it'll create zero impact on the road. We, we visit five or six times a year once it's up and built. Um, it'll create no strain on the government services and it will provide about roughly $200,000 in lifetime tax revenue to the county. So we think it's a good fit. It's a better location than previously. It's not on your main entry point. And uh, um, subject to your approval, we look forward to doing business in your county. Is there anyone here that would like to speak for the rezoning this piece of property? Is there anyone here that would like to speak against us approving this? For the solar project. There'll be a none. Any discussion or any comment from the commission? There are motion that we accept the recommendation of the planning commission and rezone this as special use. Thank you, sir. They have motion. So move, Mr. Chairman. A second. A second, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Commissioner Henderson, second by Commissioner Clyde. Any discussion on the motion? There is none. All in favor, most of them know saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign, motion is carried. You got your reason to go find you another spot. For you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Please give the commissioner my regards tonight. <laughs> when you see him, you tell him I did. I will. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Sanders. Seven C. After James. Marcus and Sonia Downer, special use request map 48, part 101, Director Simo. Yes, sir. Also on October the 5th, the planning commercial heard the following request. Uh, the applicant is heart of the home uh, marriage ministry, which is um, um, James Marcus and Sonia uh, Downer, um, who are here with us tonight. Map 48, parcel 101. Uh, which is better known as um, 2951 White Rock Road. It's 11.32 acres, currently zoned A1. The request is to apply for a special use to operate a marriage ministry and counseling facility. Um, and my commission um, recommends approval of that. Um, they're actually gonna move a, um, a third home in on the property. They currently have two uh, where they can house um, 
the applicants for their marriage retreat um, in, in two of them. They actually live in one, and uh, it will be a year-long process. I think you've got all the information um, that was submitted um, by email explaining their kind of their business plan and how they're going to um, manage their ministry. And um, the Planning Commission's approval uh, is recommending approval. I see Mr. Is down the hill. Would either one of you like to speak on it? Ken, if you want to, if you don't, you can. <laughs> we got a good recommendation anyway. Don't talk about it. <laughs> 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 State your name for the right. My name is Mark Danner. Um, my wife, Sonia Danner. And, uh, it's a pleasure and honor to be here tonight for you. Um, we. Down, I know you have your wife. Is there any other family here that you have in the building? Anyway? Well, I've got a brother-in-law here. I just want to see you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Um, yeah, we feel that um, broken homes breed broken homes, and if we can do a small part to eliminate the broken home then that's what we want to try to do. Um, and if, it, if we can save one marriage from being broken, then we feel that we would have been successful. Okay. Anybody here that wants to speak for this rezoning request? Anyone here want to speak against it? They have been. Is that a motion we accept the recommendation of the Planning Commission and rezone this? Special use request. I made that motion, Mr. Chair. Got a motion by your commission. This three. Commissioner Clyde, I second. I second. Second by Commissioner Wade. Any discussion? There is none. All in favor of the motion, let me know. Saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Motion is carried. Good luck to y'all, and I hope I'm never a couple. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank y'all so much. Thank you. I'm approval of sense. Okay, item number nine, TK Electrical Service Lights for the Library Director Signal. We need to come out of public hearing. Pardon me. We need to come out of a public hearing. Oh yeah. He broke that down. Is there a motion that we come out of the public hearing? So moved, Mr. Chairman. A second. I second. Motion by Commissioner Collins, second by Commissioner Henderson. Any discussion on the motion? There is none. All in favor of the motion let me know saying aye. Aye. All opposed like sign motion carried. Madam Clerk, can I proceed? The <laughs> UK Electrical Director Seymour. Yes, sir. Um, Ms. Dawkins, Director Dawkins, um, uh, contacted me uh, several weeks back um, about a lighting issue in the library. Uh, the lights inside the library are, um, are old fluorescent lighting that we've been having some issues with um, over a period of time, having to replace ballast, having to replace other things and so as we fixed um, the lights that were in there um, we were replacing them with LEDs to try to make them a little more energy efficient and a little brighter um, so she came to us and wanted to change out um, all of them that were remaining and there was about 45 lights um, and so I'm asking for approval tonight to pay for that out of the Dover Partridge money um, in the amount of $3,400. Also understand that she has um, also applied for a um, Georgia Power reimbursement grant um, and uh, have not gotten word as of tonight as to whether or not they have received that or not, but uh, it was a substantial amount. I think it was $900. So uh, if we get that $900 reimbursement back to us, it would be credited back to the DOBA money. So you would only be looking at you know $2,500 total. So. Okay, is that a motion that we pay TK Electrical Services to my request for the light hit the lights and box so possible? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Got a motion that second. Second, Chair. Motion by Commissioner Collins, second by Commissioner Clyde. Any discussion on the motion? There is none. All in favor of the motion, let me know saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Motion is carried. Item number 10 is the COVID. 19 response grant uh, for the elections. <clears throat> for those of you watching, if you're still sitting here, all this week discussed the 
in length of our work session, so we do know what we talk about, even though it runs through here pretty quick. Uh, I told Director Bolton that I didn't see a reason for her to come tonight. We don't really talk with her, but she is. Uh, she has applied for it and has received a grant for $5,562 be used for COVID things at the elections. Is there a motion that we accept this grant of $5,562? I'll make that motion, Mr. Chair. The second. I'll second, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Commissioner Wade, second by Commissioner Collins, and discussion on the motion. There is none. All in favor of the motion, let me I'm saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like, sign, motion carried. Item number 11, charges for leading service, Director Blunt. You know that she's not here either, but she did. She would have come, but she's already talked to us. Uh, what we need to do tonight is we need to approve for the leisure services ban the rates for the clerk and Keller. Watch, watch out, make sure I'm, I got this right. But um, what we got is a, uh, if you ride it, and, and this is separate from the DOT ban. This is a new ban that we bought back from DOT, put it in the fleet under leisure services. So it can be used for different things that the guidelines don't allow you to do with the DOT vehicles. Um, if you're going into in Lincolnton, and I'm assuming Lincoln County, a five dollar cost. If you're going to Washington, it's ten dollars. Going to Thompson, it's ten dollars. If you're going to dialysis, it's twenty dollars per month. And um, if you go into Augusta, eighteen dollars. Is that all of them? Yes, sir. Okay, y'all all have that. Is that most of them that we are, that we adopt the price list that was sent to us by Director Blunt for the leisure service payment? So maybe the Chairman. Basically, what we do is we just approve an eighteen dollar part, and the other part was already passed. So we approve an eighteen dollar for the leisure service payment. Who made the motion? I made it. Is that a second? Not second, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Commissioner Cloud, second by Commissioner Henderson. Any discussion? Chair is none. All in favor of the motion, let me know saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like, sir. The motion is carried. Item number 12 is a grant. Two, on page two. Oh, yeah, that is. I got it. I like it. <laughs> we got a great, uh, this grant will be used at, this, at the uh, leisure services, which will be a part of the leisure services now in a new department. But under that umbrella, it's the senior citizen nutrition and the transportation and the leisure service thing. So this grant in the amount of nine thousand eight hundred dollars. That's a pretty good increase from the one we got last year. They are motion that we accept this grant from the CSRA Economic Opportunity Authority in that amount. So move, Mr. Chairman. That's second. I second, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Commissioner Wade, second by Commissioner Henderson, that we accept the grant for the Department of Legal Services. Any discussion? There is none. All in favor, motion lift the number saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign, motion carried. Item number 13 is a new board for the recreation department. Uh, you have this in. Director Blaine is not here. Director Seymour is going to take the lead on this. Yes, sir. So um, the mower that we currently have at the recreation department is about eight, nine years old, um, and it's starting to have some mechanical issues and some. Um, structural issues with the mower, the frame um, uh, busted two weeks ago. We had to have some welding done to it. Um, so 
we um, got a couple of bids on replacing that mower. Um, the mower that we have out there now is a gas, a gas mower, even though it's a commercial um, style mower. Um, the, the unit that we got a price on is actually a Kubota diesel, which is um, a lot more durable, get a lot more life out of it. Uh, remember, this mower runs about uh, eight months out of the year, five days a week, it's cut. I mean, it's, it's cutting a lot of grass and, and, and pretty steady. Uh, we also cut the convenience center transfer station with it as well. Um, so I got two bids, um, written quotes. One was from Palmer Equipment at uh, $13,700, and then Carolina Power Equipment out of Greenwood, South Carolina at $13,950. Um, I would act to ask for you all to approve uh, the bid at um, Palmer Equipment for $13,700, and this money would come from our solid waste fund. Okay, this, this mower has a 60-inch deck correct. versus a 50-inch on the, on the other, is that correct? That is correct, yes, sir. Okay, you heard the request and we got the bid, the low bid being Palmer equipment. $13,700 is our motion that we purchased it. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. I second, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Commissioner Collins, second by Commissioner Clyde. Any discussion? Yes, sir, Mr. Commissioner Collins. Don't really have a discussion or comment, but some of the commissioners have already talked tonight about how good the rec department looks. Uh, I usually see it a lot earlier in the day than they do because I go over sometimes and walk down the, the uh, path, uh, track to some of the younger people. I did pass one sometimes. One <laughs> took a picture of them, but then they got me. But no, I just want to say that I too am proud of this river park. Now it looks. But also, I have been there in the mornings to walk when I've seen them have to come pull, pull a lawn more back up in the shop to get it fixed. So it is direly needed, and I have a lot of faith in the boat truck. Oh. Chairman, I'd like to also add something to that. Um, I know several months ago, um, the, the question of um, the walking track uh, and, and crack sealing and, and cool sealing that uh, was added to that project, which has been completed. Um, and so I just wanted to let Commissioner Collins know that he will be receiving a bill for half of that amount in the mail, which I think is what was discussed at this commission meeting several it's months ago. Moves, it? it has, yes, sir. <laughs> you need a <laughs> <laughs> I saw it because your sons, your grandsons over there beat it up my granddaughter. <laughs> All in favor of the motion that you know what I'm saying? Aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign motion carried. Item 15, handheld sanitizer. Uh, it says for the sheriff's department because that's where we're going to place it and purchase it. Um, we discussed this and directed Dawson. Kind of took the lead on to talk about it, but it uh, what this will do, it looks like a park. And y'all have seen it, and we've talked about it, and we know what it is. Um, this will be able to be used for the courtrooms here and in the probate magistrate's office. Could be used in other places, but it'll be used probably more in the jail area than anywhere else. Spray for the virus down there, but it will be used in some other areas. Uh, the handheld sanitizer looks sort of like a leaf blower, but it's two thousand and ninety-six dollars, and we would like to purchase this through our COVID funds that we got back. We got three hundred thirty-five thousand dollars, and we've used it for different things. But this can be taken out of the COVID reimbursement money that, that we got from the federal government. Is there a motion that we purchase this handheld sanitizer? I'll make a motion, Mr. Chairman. We purchase. That's second. I second, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Commissioner Wade, second by Commissioner Hintz. Any discussion on the motion? 
There is none. All in favor of the motion, let it be known to say an aye. Aye. Item 16 is the adjournment of the meeting. Is there a motion that we adjourn? So I'll move that motion, Mr. Chairman. Well, we got to try proper meal. Motion by Commissioner. Five seconds by Commissioner Hunt. Any discussion on the motion, Chair? Is none. All in favor of the motion, let it be known to say an aye. Aye. All opposed, like, sign, motion carried. We stand adjourned.